Oh. All right. We are live. <laughs> we are Good live. evening and welcome to FMA Discussion. Tonight is episode 114 and we are featuring, well, various aliases, but we'll go with the Paul <laughs> and June show. June! Oh, right there. And Dean. And Dean. <laughs> Good evening, yeah. folks. Good evening, everybody. Dean, uh, you know, I figured it was a special event, so I wore a tie for you. Actually, I even got a jacket on, you know? You know, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate that, you know, that you went over and that you thought it would be such a nice gesture to put a tie and jacket on. Yeah, absolutely. I, absolutely. absolutely. Oh, and, and, check this, yeah. and check this out. See, notice my, you know, my display. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, so, then, and then there's, oh, there's the shield. You know, there's the shield. <laughs> so this could be, um, well, yeah. I'm actually wondering if you will be setting a trend from this point forward as far as dress attire coming yeah. onto my show. Actually, yeah, I don't want to, you know, kind of, you know, we'll take up, we'll, we'll take up the jacket. <sighs> we'll, we'll take up the jacket. You know, it might be required <laughs> that uh, in order to come on here, you have to wear a tie. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to. Absolutely, a tie there. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. June hasn't sent me my pink jacket yet. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, I'm really uh, official. I want to welcome you guys. Um, yeah, for those who are watching and don't know, I met these fine gentlemen. <laughs> um, I, when I was in Miami, uh, well, prior to going to Miami, they had reached out and they were obviously very, very cordial, very nice. Um, they came out, picked me up in Miami. I, I mean, these guys just went beyond. <laughs> The realm um, and what they did, they were wonderful, generous with their time, you know, picking me up. And they, um, we went to, uh, I think it was a harbor or such, and where we did an interview. It was a ton of fun. If you'd seen it, you saw the, the coconut <laughs> debacle. Um, <laughs> yeah, but just wonderful guys. And I just am so lucky just to uh, not only pay back the favor, but you know, they got some good stuff going on. So I think it's wonderful that they're going to get the opportunity to be heard. Yeah. You know, and not and, just and by the way, show. you know, just for the record, you are welcome to follow our format. You know, you know we told you that during the <laughs> we show. We told you, you that were... during the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was you like, know. I, we know we're new on the block, but you can, you're welcome to follow so you know, anything to help improve, you know, the I mean, discussion. I'm, we're there. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, but, you know, I'm just so glad to be privy to like, you know, you be, I just, hey, but, I, you know, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm sure you guys are going to be relieved. I'm not going to do anything to get you guys back from the COVID. So I'm sure, I'm sure not you guys yet. Are, I'm sure it was great stress. It was causing you guys great stress that, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, no, absolutely. Hey, a uh, quick question before we uh, kind of carry on. I'm getting we're live my, already. My, now you're my, asking my, questions when well, we're live. Oh my God, this guy. Uh, no, hey, everybody that's watching, awesome. But the people that aren't watching, where do I go to send them the link? They, you know. Uh, yeah. You know that's that's what do I what do I send? Because my Facebook is blowing up saying, "Hey, where do is. I go?" And I'm like, you're, I don't know. Yeah, they're gonna have to catch it. So in other words, if they missed it. Um, one, they can watch it on my wall, or or they get directed to the YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, all that. But anyway, so again, I'm glad you guys are on. We got much to share. Your, your guys, each individual journeys, what you're doing. Got some questions. I actually got some questions for a couple of viewers. Already? And, uh, we haven't and started. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, by the way, uh, just back. for the viewers, don't forget your coconut water. Cheers! Cheers! Cheers. Dean, where's yours? Dean, where's yours? <laughs> oh, Dean, I that's okay. Dean, that's I okay. We got an extra one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was, God, you guys are always always thinking of others. You know? Yeah. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll, we'll mail it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Such an innate quality from you guys to think of others, you know. It's just you know, oh, the generosity just never ends, you know. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Hold on. <laughs> we, so, we try. We try. All right. We're going to jump into it because, I, like I said, a ton of content. We got your guys' journey. Questions from uh, a few people that sent them in through a uh, private message. We want to cover your guys' show. You guys alluded to yesterday in the test run. You guys got some uh, as far as um, gatherings and such. So let's jump into it. So what I'm going to kind of do is to geek each one of you guys kind of like first shot or something, you know, I'll ask, you know, one question I'll ask one person first, like one another question, what kind of flip flop? Okay, so okay. let's get into first exposure of your, you know, FMA. So let's start with June. What, you know, where, when, what was your first FMA exposure? So the funny thing growing up, uh, you know, let's, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of I make this, this gonna be we're, we're, we're going to yeah. make this really quick and then it's going to get into, uh, you know, when Kripal and I went, met, um, but, uh, I've always known about our niece, but I've, you know, I've had the same misconception with everybody else in the community. You know, when am I going to get in a fight with the stick? When am I going to get in a fight with the stick? You know, I've heard of Sikarad and everything else, but um, I didn't really put them as a, as a full conglomerate there. But um, then uh, when I was in Cincinnati back in the early 2000s, a friend of mine, uh, Chris Bruno, actually uh, invited me and, and said, hey, you know what, you know, there's an Arnie school. I was like, oh, yeah, you know what, I've been kind of wanting to get into it. FMA and or martial arts. Let me go ahead and try it. First day, get shown what it is. And I'm like, oh, this is this is our stuff. And I was like, yes, you know, and and uh since day one, I was hooked and and uh been there ever since and going through multiple journeys and which led then to a few years ago with uh meeting people here. Which oh, which I'm kind of which, uh, which 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 I'm fast forward. Which I'm fast forwarding from the start <laughs> to the part. That was yes, that yes. was very fast. Well, I mean, the, the thing is, the thing is, the is show that, is like, coming to an end. It's a, it's, a <laughs> it's a combined show, so uh, so uh, you know, so basically, you're trying to get to to, to the nitty gritty of between me and him, I guess. No, no, no. We're definitely going to get into yeah. when you guys met, yeah. and I, I got definitely a segment on that. So yeah. I don't want to blow but, that. Quite yeah. Yet, but but, um, um, but, but uh, I guess I guess just to to reiterate, to go back, uh, rewind a little bit, just to share a little bit more detail into that. Um, when I got introduced to that school, it was actually with the Cincinnati Balintawak Club because that's where oh. actually I I was at in Cincinnati, Ohio, and um, <clears throat> the uh, school was being taught by Grandmaster George Penifil which was uh, um, Grandmaster Bobby Tabuada's uh, instructor, FQ, uh, full qualified instructor here in the U.S. Uh, we had another FQI that was there as well, uh, Guru Reyes Sanchon. And between uh, basically the groups there, uh, that's where I really kind of tapped into the Balintawak aspect and been in Tabuada Balintawak ever since. Nice. So, okay. you know, All right. Before we get to... Uh... Mr. Paul, I just want to give a quick hello to everybody. If you are watching, please tell us where you're watching from. Hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe. We got uh, Eric, of course. Oh, Eric. <laughs> we, got <Chris> <laughs> from the we got Maria. We got Frank. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anybody. Oh, Felix from Texas. Martin. All right. All right. If you're yeah. jumping in, again, tell us where you're watching from. Yep. All right. So, so Paul, let's, uh, let's hear your first uh, experience. Well, mine will be... Um, I went to a community college in a uh, college of the page and I met uh, Eugene Amante, uh, who is an uh, instructor at Dagenberg Academy in Chicago. He's actually under the wing of Danny Nusanto. So yeah, yeah, yeah. being Filipino, uh, I was basically a Taekwondo practitioner back then. Mm -hmm. So we end up there, it became a group, a group of Filipinos who loves martial arts and we are exchanging information. So next thing I know, he has all this stuff. He has Silat, he has Muay Thai, he has uh, Filipino martial arts with different branches. And mostly what I remembered, he keeps saying it's Lamenco. So, and then next thing you know, I'm with him in Dagenberg Academy doing demos, which I have no clue what the heck I'm doing. But um, he said, you can keep up anyway. You'll pick it up pretty fast. So that, that's how it started for me. And then I got hooked from then on. And because it's a collaboration of friends, we exchange information left and right. But I, feel, I felt like I don't have a base. Mm -hmm. So the community that I live in, the suburbs of Chicago is Glendale Heights, where the mayor of the city is actually Filipino, I think for two terms. So we had a big Filipino community. Uh, in Glendale Heights, Illinois. 
So I went in my backyard and I started doing Sinawali with a couple of my Taekwondo students. Mm. I, am, I was fishing for instructors. <laughs> so uh, luckily enough, my neighbor came out. He was actually a fellow Taekwondo practitioner way back. Uh, Jeff Ramos came out and he goes, hey, Paul, do you remember me? I said, yeah, you know, you used to spar Taekwondo back then. And he goes, oh, you know, Filipino martial arts. I go, yeah. And he goes, I asked him, do you know Filipino martial arts? He goes, yeah. So I handed him the stick. Next thing you know, he started twirling, he started doing technique. And I go, and he looked at, look, looked at me and he goes, hey, Paul, can you show me yours? I said, honestly, I don't know Jack. <laughs> I, but one thing I know, I found an instructor. <laughs> So yeah, from that, yeah, that point on, from that point on, I was hooked. Wow. And this is um, just what year about? Uh, probably uh, um, 19, uh, 90, 92, 93. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah. all right. We're going to flip it back now and we're going to start with you both. Have the systems that you were exposed to there at the academy there, which you know I've heard of and I heard there's just a huge umbrella of offerings there. Was there a particular system that like really resonated with you or stood out that you enjoyed from what you saw? I actually love loved uh, Thai boxing. Uh, I ended up going to. FMA, I'm sorry, with FMA. Oh, we didn't have FMA. Uh, we didn't have FMA. Back then with the Dagenberg, I was so confused, to be honest with you. Uh, okay. It's okay. It was getting mixed. I was being taught mixed. I don't know. It jumps from from uh, Silat to Filipino to uh, to boxing to shoot fighting. It just yeah, it doesn't blended. end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's know. a blended. Yeah, you know I, what it was is um, back then, um, the only reason why I know is I went to a, a similar school, not as big, of course, in uh, Connecticut. And back then, they seemed to kind of blend everything. You know, school, many schools now have actually made the point of separating and, and all that. Correct. But I experienced the same thing. And, yeah, it was hard to decipher, like like you just mentioned, what you were doing. <laughs> yeah. If you're new. I, you know yeah. I, mean? I actually took a seminar for uh, uh, when Inosanto came, came down. And that was amazing when the first time I saw him. I'm looking mm. like this guy's fast. I mean, that's the first thing on my head. And, and I'm telling myself, I need to be that fast. Yeah. I mean, because I'm thinking if I f end up fighting this guy, I'm in trouble, <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> you know, and that's my mentality back then. So I mean, plus yeah. the 50 years experience and whatever. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give or take. <laughs> uh, June, what, you know, again, from that experience, like, what did you take away? Like, what, I mean, you know, I understand, you know, I know you mentioned, you know, Blunt to Walk and all that, but like, was there something that, you know, that really resonated with you from that initial, you know, where it was the first few weeks or something, that's something that really, like, light bulb kind of effect the other than your other maybe training or exposure anything what do you mean that uh, that really captured my attention within fma yeah <clears throat> correct so so first of all um a little bit of history for those that don't know i grew up in samoa uh i was born in the philippines but i grew up in samoa so growing up in samoa there's still we were kind of uh there's a very tight-knit filipino community there um it's a fisherman's uh, area as well, too. So we've had a lot of the guys that were fishermen being at the house. Now, uh, I don't know how well in tune most of the people back home in Samoa were, but uh, knife seems to be kind of a, a common thing, you know, of a topic in terms of, you know, stabbing here, stabbing there, even from mm -hmm. stories from back home or, or actually events there. Um, so not realizing kind of the details there and, and even though in, you know, getting trained in balance walk and getting shown the day one and being shown how it transitions from stick, which I assumed everything was just stick, from stick to blade to empty hand, automatically I started really connecting the dots into the things that I kind of fascinated when I was younger. I started mm. being able to connect the dots and say, hey, you know what? It wasn't just the thing that, you know, the guy was just kind of like rough all together. It was, it's an actual art or there's an actual thing yeah. behind it uh, actual training so um and the funny thing is i remember uh i uh, start seeing training blades you know within the school or the class and i start realizing that 
the same blades which I thought were just used to weave the nets together mm. were actually training blades as well. And I'm like, man, you know, now that I think back, I'm like, who was it there back in the days that probably were, you know, had some FMA background, maybe not formally, but still, you know, connected within the family or connected within the skill. So um, that's one of the things that's really kind of uh, kind of put a lot of things together for me. Uh, yeah, I mean. mean hearing these folklores so so to speak yep. you're able now to finally like kind of put a picture to it you know what i mean yes yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just want to make sure i'm not missing any questions here let me see yeah. depending on, name on you, baby. whatever yeah. there's a name called julius that asks a question we'll just read over that and glaze over that oh, and yeah. go to the next one gonna <laughs> ignore <laughs> julius <laughs> He's gonna make us pay. Oh, no. He's gonna make us pay. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, oh, I'm gonna get these guys to like, you know, get the behind the scenes things. And I'm like, no, oh, no. <laughs> All right, okay, June, we're gonna start with you. Um, oh, okay, so Nazi. what? Um, it's, um, I'm gonna guess it's fun to walk, but um, what led to your area of concentration? Um, like, why did you, in other words, like, why did you want to stay within the confinement of just of Buntuak? I mean, I'm, I'm guessing you've been exposed here and there to other systems, but what yep. made you want to stay there and just, I guess, really concentrate on that and that alone? Well, first of all, you know, I started this journey back in 2001, 2002. Uh, got, you know, it was one of those things. Actually, it was my first martial art experience altogether. You know, ranking wasn't a thing for me. It was just kind of more about like, hey, I enjoy doing this. And a lot of my friends were 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 practitioners as well. And uh, it was one of those things to where we would go and train twice a week in class. And then on the weekends, we would see each other. And then when we see each other, we'd be like, hey, remember that thing that we were going over in class? Where, show me show me how did that happen? And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, it's just a, a continual evolution and involvement. Mm -hmm. um, after a while, you you realize it's like wow, you know, you've got gotten so deep into it and so you know pretty proficient with it, and it was like okay, you know what? Let's just kind of continue the journey. Um, and then when I looked at the, uh, actually, when I got to my level six completion of the art um, within Tabarabalu to walk within like five years, but within that fifth year, I actually ended up with an opportunity here in Florida with the job. So the job relocated me here, mm -hmm. and then when I got relocated here. Um, it was one of those things I still, you know, I still stayed connected with my guys back home because a lot of them were my close friends. Um, but, uh, but having to kind of reconnect with the community here, establish that kind of get a feel of where things were. Now, the, the funny thing is, is that back then, um, you know, uh, Abon was here. Actually, I, I trade with, you know, with, with Gat for a little bit. Uh, then within a few years later, um, a friend of mine within the community started bringing down uh, Kuya Paulo, Kuya Doug, Marikaira, and basically um, uh, Apollo Lauder there, and and starting setting shop here. They did a few seminars. The next thing you know, you know, Kuya Paulo's down uh, down here living in Florida as well too. So uh, I connected with them and actually still trained with them, and and you know um, maybe not as often as I wish, but life was kind mm -hmm. of uh, hectic back then. But uh, in the back of my mind, it was one of those things that, you know, it, it didn't make sense for me to continue a journey when I still had that journey with Balintawak to kind of complete. Um, but long story short, uh, you know, I think a lot of Balintawak practitioners always question of, well, you're a completion of the art now, the level seven is the next the next thing. But in Balintawak, in order to get your level seven, you know, there's, there's a couple of requirements, obviously knowing the, the curriculum, but um, coming up with your own 24 techniques and then at the same time, you got to bring a student up from zero to basically a level six completion of the art, basically oh, to your yeah. level. So, basically um, a badass student, <laughs> <laughs> which wasn't yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, um, so, you know, so it wasn't about my journey at this point. Mm -hmm. It was about somebody else's journey. Um, I actually started a group here, you know, as, as a completion of the art, you're allowed to teach in a, in a smaller scale, so to speak. Um, but a lot of the guys that I ended up connecting with, you know, they weren't into, you know, martial arts. It was kind of more of an activity for them to just kind of try out. And I didn't have that person to kind of walk through to say, hey, you know what, let's go on this journey together all the way through. Right, right. But, right, right. Um, and then so I, you know, I tried to, you know, I had a, a small class and then next thing you know, I was like, all right, you know, let me just uh, work got in the way. So I ended up stopping it. And then about 2016, when Grandmaster George Penfield passed away, 
I said, well, you know, the, the aspect of time kind of kicked in. And we're talking about uh, a good uh, 13, 14 years between, you know, mm -hmm. uh, this time. And uh, what ended up happening was when he passed away, I said, you know what? I really need to kind of consider where, you know, taking this, taking this journey because there was a couple of things. I was looking forward to testing in front of my instructor and, you know, and Grandmaster Bobby Taboada. And then when yeah. Grandmaster George passed away, I was like, holy crap, there's only there's only one person left, you know, there's Grandmaster Bobby. I mean, I love all my peers, but I was like, I wouldn't want, you know, if I was going to become a FQI, I said it'll be with Grandmaster Bobby. So I decided to co go into this journey and really kind of focus in now into the FQI. Um, and uh, when I decided to go down this journey, the interesting component was I was kind of starting from scratch. I didn't know who it was going to be that I was going to take the journey with. He, um, this was December, 2016 when he, when he, uh, when he passed 2017, I dedicated that year to saying, all right, let me, let me go through making sure I'm kind of, you know, still, you know, pretty sharp with, with the curriculum and everything else. Um, and then I came back into the Balintawak walk scene, uh, a little bit more active that camp by October, November camp. Um, and it so happens that, uh, Coming back into that camp, I get kind of get a lay of the land, see who's doing what and whatnot. And some people knew me, some people don't, didn't. But you know, but whatever, it was just my thing to come back into into sure. the, uh, the into the field. Mm -hmm. uh, so, not not knowing who and what, the stars aligned up, and uh, three weeks later, I end up going to a Katipunan um, over in uh, Naples with uh, with Dan over there. And uh, that's where I ended up running into Kuyo Paul. And uh, we could go down that road uh, um, with basically how we met, uh, how we met, you know, we were both kind of coming out of the scene and uh, not totally knowing what each other was kind of going through in some of the journey. He ended up, uh, yeah, we ended up connecting and kind of, I guess, from there, yeah, we're gonna, I don't know. You know kind of, deeper to, yeah. Yeah, yeah so no, we can do that, but that, it's fine that we're we're touching on it. I mean, no big yeah, deal. But yeah. I just want to make sure because <clears throat> I'm getting a couple in here, and I just want to see where they fit in. Far as what we covered thus far, um, so, sorry. Ooh, dang! You're you. coming up with some strong questions. Yeah, <laughs> with your, <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to figure where the plug these in. Um, I want because I want. Holy sure crap! You know, I'm reading it now. <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't um, scroll down because it was stuck on a on a segment, and yeah. then I go down and I'm like, "Whoa, what a!" <laughs> Base front. All right, we'll get back to that. Holy um, crap! Paul, let's um, I tell you what, Paul. Let's um, let's jump into. Let's uh, where you got it. When did you, Paul? Let's 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 hear. When did you go from kind of like you're messing around? You had that, you know, your first exposure there. Let's go into where you got exposed to the Herosa system. How did that happen? Okay. Uh, so you guys know. Okay. So what? what uh, I'm just gonna bring it. Bring this up. It was a stressful oh, oh. morning for me today. <laughs> I'm because I have to. <laughs> bring this up that usually it's either going to be bad for me or i'm not <laughs> no no it's not bad for anybody it's bad for me too know, <laughs> you know practice fma and it fits your passion and you you learned it years ago you don't really care about dates what year what style who and what you know and the whole day today i'm digging up information so i can put the dates what happened yeah, yeah, not, so i can yeah, put it in order so on the show i can you go on sequence, I guess. So I actually wrote it in my notebook. I ended up buying a notebook to write them down. I got <laughs> so, mine. I got mine already. <laughs> so uh, let's go on the Hirosa journey. Uh, basically, what happened was we, I was, our group in Chicago under Jimmy Takosa was very much established already. We have a strong group in Chicago, and my brother moved to Florida in Gainesville. Mm -hmm. And total probably numbers of students, probably over 100 co combined with Florida and Illinois. Uh, we were young, so we were very competitive. We actually go there, and we like to bang. Uh, and our mentality is always a fast. So we thought we were the fastest 
in the whole world, okay? So suddenly on uh, 2010, Escrimador came out. And I'm watching this, am I right? I saw Hirosa. I'm like, oh my God, somebody else is faster than me. You know, being that mentality again of, if I face this guy, I'm going to be in trouble. I need to learn that art. So I had a journey the whole to 2010. I think it came out December 2010. So 2011, I seek out the organization, the Hirosa de Cuerdas. And that's where uh, they have a school in Cebu uh, City. Um, I thought it's open door because they have a school already. So I called them and the first thing that they asked me was, who are you? So I'm like, oh my God, this is old style again, even though they have a school already, I'm going to go through this process. So it took me another eight months to find uh, uh, GMO it. Um, and he won't answer because uh, he thought it was a challenge because I, I, I'm coming from somewhere that he doesn't know. And I'm just calling him and texting him and saying, I want to meet you. I want to learn from you. Okay. So. I end up going to Cebu. I end up going to Asinulog, which is celebrated around January 15th. It's a big deal in Cebu. Uh, uh, a friend of mine, I figure this will be a, a, a bait again, like what I did with my neighbor. So I said, you know, uh, Monica, tell her, tell Jim Owit that you want to learn and you want to meet him. <laughs> so Monica texted him. And of course enough, he answered back. He goes, oh <laughs> He goes, I'm in Mandawe. If you want, you can come and meet me and this and that. So I came in there with Ma uh, Monica because she's Cebuano. She can speak Visaya. So I said, I'm going to need your help. If she sees the guy start talking to me, Visaya, I ain't going to understand this guy. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know? So um, basically, uh, mm -hmm. it's a bait. I gave a bait and GMO it, took it and I became a student. The rest uh, is got, <laughs> well, actually, after that year, he went on hiding again. I didn't see him again till 20, 20, 2013 or 2014. Okay. He went on hiding. So every time I go after 2010, I had a hard time finding him again. Okay. So we're going to, all right. So, you know, because this is a kind of a new system, A, I think for many, and I mean, definitely for me. I mean, I, I have obviously have heard of it, <clears throat> kind of an offshoot of all that, but that doesn't mean I, certainly know everything about it so why don't you just for the viewers who maybe don't know what it is and all that why don't you can you give us a brief breakdown of the system um basically the system came from uh anshong bakun it's a system that was learned by uh uh anshong bakun sister uh commander ligaya it was a family art of the bakuns uh, mm. anshong bakun back then is very uh uh, I think he's old already, so he can't start from beginning and finish the art, his family art. So he ended up uh, taking a student, uh, Liborio Hirosa, which is his neighbor. So with, with Anshong Bakon and Nene Rosales, they taught uh, 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 Liborio Hirosa the art of Hirosa, basically. Uh, basically, they call it the Cuerdas before. Uh, the, 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 the last name we'll just put in there. It's, it's called the Cuerdas. Okay. Uh, after he, the requirement was he needs to finish Balintawak first. So he became the youngest instructor in Balintawak back then. After he completed that, he got moved to the Dequerda system. He spent a year learning that, and then that's when Anchung Bakon gave him the title, the uh, holder of Dequerdas. So ah, then, yep. Interesting. So basically, from there, uh, he goes down. Uh, keep the art, it's yours. That's how wow. the Hirosa system so started. So he was, at that point, then kind of the heir or the keeper? The keeper, yeah. 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 And then that, okay. was, passed, that was passed to uh, GM Owit, oh, okay. uh, which unfortunately passed last year. So, oh, okay. And now, it, yeah, it, it, now it was handed to seven of us. The, the holder now, are, there's seven of us holding... Rosa de Cuerdas. And you're currently the only one in the U.S., though, correct? Yes, I'm the only one uh, in the U.S. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, so folks, it's a big responsibility. 
yeah, it's a big responsibility, and uh, hopefully, I can uh, honor my uh, ins- my uh, instructor mm. and live up to the standards that he he's given to us. Oh, I'm I'm, I'm sure that goes without saying. Like, wow, that was interesting, interesting background. I just again, I'm just going to quickly check. So, I'm trying to input these questions in here. Um, <laughs> all right, here we go. June, this, this is this this is good time for this question, and it's from Eugene. June, <clears throat> your favorite FMA systems that you can plug into your Balintawak based from that can be unnoticeable when playing. Interesting question. My bala you na. Uh, all right, let's see. What's a uh, favorite FMA systems that I can plug into my balloon? Yeah, well, they maybe like a guy like me, um, for instance, or whoever yeah. couldn't well, tell. Well, the thing is, is that, uh, you know, I uh, first of all, I've been blessed to be able to have the opportunity to to play with a lot of different Balintawa lineages and segments. And mm-hmm. each one has their own different flair mm-hmm. and qualities. And Region. so... Um, um, Okay, who's that? Oh, the <laughs> money. Oh, no. I was like, somebody talking to me. <laughs> but um, yeah, no. But uh, I noticed that there's a different flavors across different uh, different styles or specifics, I guess. Um, so what have I been within within the system? You know, we're very focused on speed and power and reflexes within within the Taboada system. Uh, and it's it's really the things that I've been able to kind of incorporate actually was a little bit of the Hirosa in there um, because of the of being able to kind of just catch up to certain certain attacks uh, within the play. Um, but uh, it only happens when the feeder ends up throwing in their flavor. It's not something that I'm doing to apply within 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 when leading, but it's oh, when nice. receiving because I'm basically. Um, I'm basically the one that's being ukied, so to speak. And uh, so when the speeds come in, it's 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 uh, it's things that I'm able to kind of deploy and just kind of help catch up and and get into uh, into that. But uh, because there's still similarities on on distance, you know, I'm able to kind of uh, really work those in um, within there. Thank you, Eugene, for putting me on the spot. Absolutely. <laughs> And, and and the funny thing is is that actually I see you know I see a lot of those little components too within one bag you know I mean yeah. when when it's when it's system to system and playing within the same rules it actually mm. uh, it it flows within what you would what somebody from outside looking in would be able to see but when the other person ends up having to break out the person that's receiving needs to realize it's breaking out of certain parameters and need to be quick to recognize and adapt to those things and I think that's yeah. you know those are the things that. Uh, no, to be kind of uh, understood. No, well answered. All right, we get Paul. I'm going down the right down the line of these questions. So I don't miss it. <laughs> Paul, what makes you like Lintawak, <laughs> and how do you blend it in with your Herosa de Suertes in your own understanding or approach? Good question. So the question is, how do I blend? So how do you blend it in with your Herosa and your own understanding or approach? So coming from an Anbalintawak background, when I learned Hirosa, a lot of people are going to get mad at me at this, but I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just going to say. Hey, just, don't, just don't drag me into it. <laughs> okay, this is my perspective. Okay, so please, this you know, be, 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 g- <laughs> be gentle with me. Uh, again, I came from a Sarada background going to uh, 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 Hirosa de Cuerdas. Uh, I went from basically, if I put Hiro, uh, Sarada, the, Sarada now in a category, they are probably, ah, I'm going to get in trouble, oh my God. But uh, let us let me rephrase that. Uh, yep, take a lot. Yep, oh, yeah, let, me, let, me, let me pull it up. All right, welcome, welcome to the show. <laughs> you have the answer. This okay. No, no, no I'll, I'll answer it. It needs to be answered because it's going to come out anyway. So, uh, okay, all right. Hirosa's main theory on, if we talk about power, okay, um, uh, June, what's power again? 
<laughs> man, you, <laughs> don't, don't put like that. <laughs> but uh, the component is speed. So we mm-hmm. actually train for speed. Everything that we do is speed. We have to be first. If we can't be first, we have to be the first to counter. It's so hard to learn it because I don't have a basic balinta walk. So what I have to do is actually I'm trying to find another person who knows balinta walk so I can start from beginning and work my end, I guess, to the end product. That's when me and uh, to the I'll okay. So I reach out to a couple of people who knows balinta walk. And luckily enough, the Kati Punan here in uh, Naples, Florida, end up having uh, June uh, as a uh, uh, as a guest and that's when he saw what he's looking for and I saw in him what I was looking for so basically to answer mm. the question now that I understand base uh, the base or the foundation of Balintawak I can easily execute now my Hirosa because back then I was just blind I'm like he just and then again the, the way I was being taught was if he does this, you do this. If he goes here, you do this. Okay, okay, okay. So people who are watching actually my videos and YouTube, I'm the one who created those, those names, the the wiper, the open close. I'm the one that created them. With oh, the approval, with the approval of GM Owet, of course. Mm-hmm. And actually, our team, the six guys that are holders of the art now. Um, they're actually trying to learn what I'm trying to also teach because the way they were taught was the same way. It's do this, do that. And when I was learning on this, uh, imagine GMO was just sitting beside me and saying, here's what I want you to do. Do this, do this, do this. And then he goes, no, go ahead and spar without showing me. He's just giving it to me in words. Yeah. And it was hard. Um, yeah, that would be, that'd be a tough challenge. Yeah. Correct. More ways so, than yeah, so uh, you've done JKD, am I right, um, Dean? Oh, yeah, it was my, I was right. a JKD guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So Still the first am. movement, yeah. Remember the first movement is Paxau? Yeah, yeah. If we cross sticks with Hirosa, that's going to be our first movement. It's almost you like know, Paxau. It's so funny. I was having this conversation, honest, honest, honest to God, last night with somebody, and the guy... It's going to it's going to completely correlate what you're talking about. He goes, yeah, you know, you know, Wing Chun and boxing are really the same. If you if the Wing Chun and nice move, and I'm like, yeah. And he goes, and I go, yeah, you know, it's funny. I go, and I and the first thing came to mind, I go, yeah, you know, blood, you know, that blood to box stuff is kind of like F, the Wing Chun of FMA if you think about it. But you know, but again, oh, box out, box out. I mean, yeah. So we don't we don't call it. Paxau in Hirosa, we call it the spark. The spark, okay. okay. Correct. Because that's how the, how we start to, to get in. Mm. Uh, GMO, it always tells us that it only needs one click, then you have to finish the fight. You just, in other words, you, you have to get, uh, obviously with the range and all that, upon contact. Upon contact. I gotcha, I gotcha. Okay. So, yeah, once the contact of the stick... Once the contact of the stick does that, I have to go in. Right. That should be right. The moment that you hear that, feel it, yep. whatever, auditory, that's your go. That's why most of the time the heroes is fast because sometimes we don't use our vision to mm. see what the heck's going. Sometimes You're we just feel. Auditory. Okay. Correct. I got you. I got you. Okay. Hopefully I answered, I answered no, the question. No, no. I, think both, <laughs> I think both of your answers to those questions, in my opinion, from the little I know. <laughs> I thought it was good. All right. I just want to make sure, though, again, I'm not missing the uh, long range. I just want to see where I can tie these in. <laughs> Are you guys laughing at me? Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> bring, okay. it, bring, bring it out, June. Bring it out. Uh, you don't have any? What the heck? <laughs> oh, my God. Are we breaking out okay, that gin? <laughs> you guys are not breaking out that gin yet, are you? <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't be doing that. I need you guys sober for the next hour. 
<laughs> yeah, who knows what's going to come out at that point? Okay, here, let's go. I mean, this, this will kind of tie in since we're talking about comparing contrast of systems. So Julia's question is, so would you consider your close range systems to be Balintowoc, Serata, and Arosa, and the long range to be GAT? I guess we're both of you. So whoever wants to take a stab at it. June, you Short first. answer, yes. <laughs> <laughs> short answer, okay. yes. Uh, I will you know, the short I mean, answer. You know, no, I mean, ahead, for, yeah, yeah. For me, I mean, you know, first of all, I mean, martial arts wise, FMA wise, as I said, Valenta Walk has been my my base and foundation. And the thing I love about it is that from what I was taught and I was given, it was it was it was practical to go ahead and go out and bang and basically just you know tear things up. And at the same time, it was a you know it was really a, a solid foundation to be able to explore other things. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, and I think the curiosity for me of checking you know seeing what other styles do and stuff is because you know I'm new technically. I was kind of new into F martial arts and Philippine martial arts altogether. So unless somebody shows me how things are done, I'm not able to immediate correlate. I mean, before I wasn't able to immediate correlate how that kind of fits into the space of things. Um, and then uh, with Gripal here having, you know, a little bit more deeper of experience, you know, there's a lot of sharing with, with uh, different attributes of the Hirosa and, and Serata that comes mm -hmm. in. And I'm like, oh, okay, hey, you know, then you start, you start pick and choosing little bits and pieces and, and, and start molding, you know, around the strengths and, and capabilities of what you can do within, within the art altogether. Um, and then, yeah, the, and then, so that's in the close range within this, the long range, the GAT, I mean, uh, the GAT actually is not just within the long range aspect of it. You can actually apply it within that short range, uh, field. You just got to mm -hmm. understand the body mechanics, nice. the, the body, me <laughs> the body mechanics, the footwork, All the approved. angles, and basically, um, you know, levels and depth, and, you know, different, so many different components there within, within that. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't just say that as just being my long range, because to tell you the truth, within what I've gotten in Balintawak in the top water system, a lot of my long range is from that. It's just a matter of people realizing which part of it it is that they, they pull the long range from. But yeah, there's, there's, um, I, I it's all as yeah. one. Yeah. It's not no. just not short or, or long. It's, it's all as one. Paul, anything you would like to add to that? Uh, long range will be a rifle and we we have to be a complete FMA practitioner, so <laughs> firearms included. But yes, everything that June said is uh, right on the money. Okay. Okay. <laughs> No, um, no need to repeat. Same, same yeah. training partners. <laughs> yeah. no, this is good. This is good. Also, folks, if you're just jumping in, and which I know is um, it's going up, which is great, let us know where you're watching from and hit that like button. Uh, thank you for hosting him. Yeah, payback time. I don't know. And it's going to be tough to pay them back. I'm thinking I'm letting them off the hook. Uh, <laughs> okay, what was the most? Okay. Here's a qu uh, question for you, Arjun. It kind of fits in. What was the most difficult aspect of Balintawak for you to hone while on your journey? Oh, what was, you know, it was um, seeing how it applies on a, uh, outside of the parameters. Um, because, I mean, a lot of people see just the training of block and counter, block and counter. And blocking mm. it took me a while to understand and comprehend hey kind of what those attributes are building and and okay. expand on it um i think that was probably one of the things that really kind of uh that that i had to identify in my journey um the other thing too is is uh you gotta segregate sport from an actual fight and from no, just training the same <laughs> They're the same, yeah. yeah. I don't see you a know. difference, June. <laughs> <laughs> just a slight, a slight. And and you know, and you know, when we were when we were interviewing with Ganesh Bobby and, and um, a few weeks ago on on our on um, on our show that uh, with the Karate Rahe that basically you know what he thought about um, what he thought about tournaments and everything and it made sense and I understood it because 
if you were to just go on, on a Balintawak strike within a padded, um, on a, on a helmet, you know, there's, there's no respect to it. I mean, you know, and, and we all know that in terms of, mm. of, uh, of practitioners, at least, you know, people that are a little bit more aware, um, because the guy would continue to go in. Um, mm. and interestingly enough, you know, these are things that I've, you know, a good, good group of guys, you know, it was, uh, Michael Malanya with Cincinnati Balintawak, uh, Reyes Anshon and, uh, and I actually, it was three of us early in, early in early 2000s. We're like, Hey, you know what? Let's see what this training is all about. And actually it was kind of still frowned upon to, to really jump into tournaments. But, uh, mm -hmm. Grandmaster George was like, Hey, you know what? You guys want to see what you guys are made of? Go ahead. I support you. And, and, <laughs> and, and you know, it's like, yeah, you guys want to go, go. Um, go, and we go. did. And, um, and that's where you, you know, I, my eyes kind of really got open and say, all right, Hey, this is where, this is where, you understand what works, what doesn't, not what works, what doesn't work, how to isolate training from, from sparring to actual, you know, street aspect there. Mm -hmm. So, um, and yeah, so basically, um, but then within sparring, that's where you start realizing and asking yourself, you know, what are those key components that you want to really focus on? You can't just come into sparring and be like, yeah, I'm going to win, you know, and on a boxing match and who, depending on who the aggressor is. No, it's, 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 um, it's a matter of knowing, let's see what your art and, you know, A, can I get the first power strike in? Can I, mm. can I distance correctly and get a proper strike? And well, you know, check, check, check. But the, you know, at the end of the day, that's not what the, what the uh, tournament's made out of. Um, yeah. And I will challenge people, you know, to, to think about this out there when they're sparring. I hear a lot of talk about sparring that goes on. Um, it was an interesting thing to me because it's one thing to spar within inner school, within, within, Hey, you know, within your same school, within the same system. Uh, yeah. And then it's another thing for you to go and spar with another system and your system where both of you kind of are aware with, with what oh, each I other know, does. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. But yeah. But the other component is going into a sparring match or, a, a you know, actually for us, it was a tournament. We're going straight into a tournament. I don't know what that guy knows. He don't know what I know. And it was just a yeah. matter of like, all right, we're, we're, we're going. Um, yeah, no, yeah, no. And then that's, those are three different, you know, my suggestions yeah, to those yeah, guys right. are sparring. Those are three different well, ways to kind of, to, you know, to really kind of not really test yourselves, but more kind of understand mm -hmm. what, uh, you know, what you're, what you're really capable of, you know? Yeah, no, no. Well, put. yeah. I mean, no. I mean that, you know, we, it was, it was pretty awesome. Cause uh, actually within, within a couple of years, we did the, the um the uh arnold classic in columbus and then the following year hufana actually had a tournament in vegas and we jumped in mm -hmm. and on on that tournament of us that was a freaking big tournament by the way i mean we had there was so many segments and stuff and then the following year we did uh we did uh the columbus again uh with uh, arnold classic but then that year actually um that year i ended up moving uh to florida by then so the guys ended up continuing to uh to do the tournaments, but um, I was out by that point. Yeah, no, yeah. good stuff. But that was, um, but that was, uh, yeah, that's a that's a little tidbit there. Yeah, no, let no. me add something on the on the yeah. on the sparring aspect of it. Sure. Um, going to the point of view as uh, as a Thai boxer, okay, uh, not because I'm trying to promote Thai boxing. It's just like this. Are you trying to promote my Thai boxing ball? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or BJJ, let's say BJ, either one. Uh, when an instructor teaches you a technique, right? He'll show you maybe, let's say on BJJ, he'll show you one or the two techniques. One will be the basic mm. and one will be the advanced. Mm. On the last 10 minutes of the program, you have the free spar, right? Mm -hmm. My question to the BJJ people, sometimes they spar just to spar to try their technique. Everything that they've learned in one, in that three minute period of free, uh, free fight, right? Mm. What I do, on my other hand, is I try to apply the two techniques that was shown to me. That's the time I should train to see if I can pull it off when that next guy I'm fighting is only thinking about submitting me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, we, we do, yeah, we call it isolation, which I'm sure, you know, it sounds like what you're talking about, as opposed to, okay, uh, go spar. Correct. Well, but most I mean, people, yeah. we don't have that in FMA. We just mm -hmm. have, okay, we train. And then let's go full on hit each other, right? Yeah, 
No, okay, I, I, get the, your, I get where you're going yeah. with this. Yeah, in the yeah. in, in the picture of 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 boxing or Thai boxing, they there's a a a, a class that they call smoker fights. Mm -hmm. We don't have those. The smoker fight is when you took two individuals to learn to fight almost like, well, it's 100%, but not in front of the audience. Yeah. After the end of the day, both of you go home and you guys learn from sparring each other. And then if you're ready, then if you're ready, correct. And that's what's missing, I think. We need to create some sort of a smoker no, fight. No. I forget the interview I had and um, and that the whole thing of venues came up, you know, within our community. And, you know, like if you look at it, what they're doing over there, obviously we've got dog bus here, but there's nothing, you know, as far as regionally that you, you know, like you alluded to that it's not, you know, every region doesn't have something. I mean, let alone we got going on COVID, but um, even before that, you know, I, there's not, it's not a commonality, like, you know, like you go to, you know, every state is like maybe hosting something or every other, it's, it's not. And I think that's something um, that could be a value to our community. You know? right. And what's losing also on that is a lot of people, I mean, you don't see smoker fights being published or being mm -hmm. sent to a, to a FMA, you know, you know being yeah. posted. Because th those are understood that nobody will see that. That's between yeah, the yeah. trainers or people that go there. Uh, you know, I, I wish we can have something like that. It's basically a gathering wherein you spar with, you know, with the intent, but it's not for being published. So there's no ego or being the, like the commercialized and, and you know, and then throw up on YouTube for you know thousands. For, see what correct, correct. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just want to point that out. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I get you. I get you. Um, okay, guys, we're hitting um, normally. I don't even bring this up this early, but I'm just going to tell you something. It's going to be, there's no way we're squeezing everything in tonight. Um, <laughs> big shocker. <laughs> so just here's the thing, and the reason why I'm bringing it up now is just because I'm just trying to, you know, with time and what is left and all that. Um, I have an idea to kind of throw out there. Um, I mean, we got time yet, but I figured I would bring this up now because it's going to kind of direct me what to do. If we did a part two, what I'm thinking is we get, you know, it would be really neat if we did the part two and you guys together. Because then yes. the folks can kind of see <laughs> what some of the questions. Yeah. But no. <laughs> you guys are no. like, oh, no, no, no. no. But no. I think they can see. Like what you guys are talking about, as far as to Rosa and the Blood and Walk, and what you guys do, you know, and then we can get because what what's your guys thought on that? I'm a go. Okay, when do you guys normally get together? <laughs> I guess <laughs> <laughs> June has no choice because <laughs> if I go, he goes. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's, 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 it's the June and Paul show. You know, it's like it's not just a June show or Paul show. It's like. All right, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, we're actually. Normally, uh, um, when do you get together? Weekends? Uh, weekends. Actually, weekends. Uh, next weekend will be where um, every other weekend I'm off, so that will be perfect. Well, we'll okay. schedule it. We'll right, schedule we, it. We'll, we'll, we'll look at the schedules. Okay. okay. All right. So then I'm, okay. Yeah, I'm just. Like I looked at, we're going on and there's no way. Because <laughs> um, I even got the, the viewers quite Okay. All right. Well, that's good. All right. Let's go. Okay. All right. Let's get into um, weapon quickly. You know, weapon preference. What do you, what's your favorite weapon to play around with work and all that? June. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's the June and Paul. You, your name starts first. <laughs> that's just because it's alphabetical. <laughs> <laughs> what was the question? Weapon, weapon preference. Weapons preference. Or weapon oh, preference. Weapon preference. Yeah. yeah favorite, I guess I like the favorite thing you, <laughs> no. Right. No. Um, no, no. Um, you like to have every day. If you, had a, if you had a choice, it's just to have one. And what, well, for what purpose? Am I am I just he, practicing? He, am I training by myself? From, am I uh, playing with somebody else, or am I like going um, out? You know what? He just specified. Let's go with solo. 
Well, it's, yeah. Well, no, it's it's. Um, I've been going with. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, being an FMA, you're 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 used to the rattan and basically kind of really weapons choice of of training. But I've been trying to put a little bit more emphasis on blade and mm -hmm. really kind of um, understanding a good flow with it, and not just kind of a good flow, but kind of a nice proper. Um, proper flow and and functions and because uh, there's strikes out there with a stick that just doesn't apply onto blade or is a little bit more difficult to kind of do mm -hmm. um we won't go through anything particular there but that's <laughs> gonna, gonna take us on a deep end of something else but um you know proper flow i mean I, you know it's you see a lot of um cut flips here and there and stuff with the sticks mm -hmm. But to do that with the blade, you're gonna jack up your wrist, and really, you're. Oh, yeah. you know, I mean, I think the people that that have done a lot more blade work would understand kind of really kind of how the blade flow and the 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 motion that it needs to con kind of continue to slice, so to speak, and the adaption because you go from impact weapon versus a cutting weapon. You know, a lot of people think, hey, you know, it's a, it's an automatic, you know. Um, alignment but, yeah. Yeah, but it's not really i mean there's going to be some calibrations that you that's going to need to be done so um training a stick of obviously because it's it's fma but blade work is is what it's um what i've been working on <laughs> paul behind the scenes <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a trick question. So yeah, yeah. it's a very trick, tricky question. Uh, yeah, you can put it in a solo context. You can put it if you're working out with somebody, whatever context you want to put in. Uh, weapon, weapon wise, okay. I mean, if we're going to teach the people, uh, your viewers, especially the beginners, the weapon, the best weapon is your mind. You got to use your mind. Because uh, if you don't use your mind, <laughs> any weapon you get, I will destroy you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. I'm seriously, I'm being serious. Use your mind yeah. because that can take you either a, away from the situation, get okay. into it, and end the end end the fight. Of course, okay. you going home with your family. Use your mind, yeah. and that's most important. All right, let's. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, um, no, good enough. Uh, I'm going to try this same kind of because it kind of fits. Uh, this is from a, a viewer as well. Preference, blade or empty hand for both of you? Blade. <laughs> you know, blade. No, I mean, I'm sorry. Blades or this? Yeah, blade or empty hand. hand. Well, I you guess, know, what do you prefer to work with? I mean, what do you prefer for us? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, uh, Blade. <laughs> Dean, I got a coconut. I, <laughs> I don't know what you're showing. This is Maybe a fresh coconut. Yeah. Oh, my turn, my turn, my turn. I'm not sure what it is. No. Oh, here, hold on. <laughs> Yep, I I opened my coconut. <laughs> oh, what actually, are you showing me? <laughs> it, should, it should be more like, you know, like taking it off from the top. <laughs> Go ahead, June. Right. Did you answer the question already? He, he's good. He answered. I, oh, I went with Blade. I Blade, mean, you know, no, he yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. good. He's good. Yeah, I'm okay. Blade too. <laughs> yep. No argument there. Okay. Yep. Uh, all right. <laughs> I mean, they're both teaching. No need to elaborate. So, uh, I'm going to assume you're both teaching what we kind of discussed. Uh, June, you're teaching Buntuak. Yes. Um, exclusively. Okay, well, fine. Wait, Paul, are you exclusively teaching Herosa? Uh, yes, Herosa, Sarada, uh, basically. And a little okay. bit of Garimot if uh, um, people here in Naples, Florida. Okay, okay, okay. What do you try eating? This is for both of you. Uh, June, why don't you, take, why don't you uh, tackle it first? What do you try to instill in your students? Repeat that again. What am I trying to instill? Or Yeah, for the, for the students you teach, what do you try to instill in them? Um, not just from the physical perspective, but like in their journey. What do you try to instill in them? Well, first of all, you know, being Filipino, I kind of feel like I have a little bit of added responsibility to 
represent you know the culture the art and 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 basically you know the, the system um and when i you know when teaching these guys i mean these you know my students they're basically representatives will become representative representatives of each other um i see you know this you know across the across the not the i guess the space that uh there's a lot of nice flashy good movements and whatnot out there but mm -hmm. You know, fundamentals foundation seems to be kind of, you know, could be better, could be improved on. Um, so a lot of the guys that I have here, um, it's actually interesting. I mean, I get a wide range from you know, no martial arts to you know, to you know, experiencing other FMA systems there. But uh, the thing that I instill is, you know, Grandmaster Bobby has done a great job with with putting his curriculum to where it's really establishing some great consistent fundamentals. And um, that's basically been what I've been instilling with my guys. And it's not just the, a matter of, of being able to apply the movement, but applying it in a, in a higher level, so to speak. You know, as much as possible, I try to get them to have a nice, crisp, presentate, clear, concise presentation of what the strikes are. And then beyond that, um, how, does it, how does it apply out there, you know, realistically? Yeah. How, do you, how do you transfer that from from you know from a basic fundamental to how does it apply um you know in in a confrontation you know and really a lot of it is is understanding the body mechanics and body movements and how do you generate you know the power within within short distance and and very good reflex and reaction times so okay. that's kind of those are the things that i'm kind of instilling with my guys that's excellent yeah. paul what do you um same question for you hmm. You're mute, mute, mute. You're on mute. <laughs> uh, Eric O'Brien just told me that I'm drinking a, a not a fresh coconut. So here's the coconut that I was trying to show you, Dean. There's the two, three holes yeah, the that three needs to eyes. be punctured. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> which you find you had it upside down. <laughs> I don't know what so was that? Like no, that which, which Dean wouldn't find if he had it upside down. Like yeah. So here's a fresh know. coconut. <laughs> coconut drink uh, yeah so uh the question uh make it simple uh this has been uh what do you call this uh promoted to all martial arts since before so it's your mind body and soul you need to develop all three and i need to make sure that all my students will get all three components regardless oh if they came regardless if they came just to lose weight I always mm. tell them, wait, look, look what's happening. You're also learning how to do self-defense. And the mm -hmm. next thing you know, I, the, the only uh, one that I cannot teach them is the spiritual aspect of it. I can guide them, but mm -hmm. I cannot force them to believe on what I'm no, believing. No so mind, body, and soul, develop that, guys. And you will be a very good practitioner and use your <laughs> mind to fight. <laughs> <laughs> the end. <laughs> the end. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. This is kind of a blend of a viewer who sent it in and me. So, uh, greatest asset as a teacher and why? What do you, June? What do you feel is your greatest asset as a teacher and why? Wow, wow. that that is a good question. Wow, I, I was like, what makes yeah, this, man. Yeah, this Hold team, on. like I said, is kind of. I had a little. You yeah. know, I, I almost want to ask some of my my students that are on here. I believe there's a couple of them that's on here. I almost want you guys to say, "Hey, why don't you guys fill in the answer for answer that for me?" I don't because I, I I don't know. No, yeah, no. I mean, um, or maybe based on feedback. Well, well, you, well, well I mean, so well. First of all, I mean, I I um. What makes me, I guess, a, well, repeat the question. Great teacher, good teacher. You know, let's, no, let's no, no, understand no. the level. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest asset as a teacher and why? I think it's, it's understanding their perspective. You know, I, I, uh, being an instructor was never something I, uh, hey, let's go, Marshall Creation. Go ahead and plug it in while I kind of try to answer it myself. But, um, but, uh, I never really kind of plan on being an instructor. I mean, it was one of mm -hmm. those things. Yeah, I'll do it because, you know, it was, it was like, I got to finish the journey and it was something that I, you know, that, 
you know, my instructor said, hey, you know what, you should kind of, you know, kind of develop mm -hmm. this. Um, and, I, you know, to me, I was always, you know, the white belt, white belt mentality is like, all right, hey, you know what, it's, it's, it's understanding, um, you know, I don't need a, a rank to tell me, hey, you know, I'm, I'm good or, or whatever. It's just, it's just, uh, I've always been a student. So from that perspective and coming from no background whatsoever in martial arts or martial training, I didn't even appreciate ranks, rank uh, testing. I'm just like, mm. oh, you guys want me to rank? Okay, uh, I'll level test now. Okay, yo, you guys want me to do this? Okay, you know, I mean, it was, uh, it was, it wasn't something I was, I was chasing. So um, mm -hmm. when all these new guys are coming in, it's trying to, I, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm over explaining to my guys because it's like, look, this is why we do this, but how it's applied is do this, and then when you're going against somebody, you, you know, calibrate this way, and you know, different, mm -hmm. you know, different things that way, but. Um, but the one thing I would say is, is that um, understanding that you really got to break it down. You really got to break it down to a fundamental base level. And then once they got the base level, you're able to go on and make the polishes. Perfect. Paul, yes. same, well, same question. Yeah. Let me uh, answer to June because I'm a student. <laughs> uh, June's biggest asset for me is – he will take you to the highest level possible you're capable of before an event mm -hmm. or before something happens. Let's say we're going to go to a camp. He's going to take you to yeah. a certain level so you will appreciate <laughs> when you go to camp. That's what I like about this guy. <laughs> That's I right. Mean, <laughs> he, will, he will push you to the limit. I mean, uh, so oh, regarding me, uh, my nickname before when I teach is the Punisher. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I punish a lot of students if they don't follow my rules. So, mm. <laughs> but my asset is basically, if you became my student, I will not give up on you. I accepted yeah. you as a student and I will do whatever's necessary so you will learn. Most of the time, the students are the one who's going to be quitting instead of me. Yeah. All right. Yeah, no, actually, good. And Marshall Creation just dropping in the bomb over there with, with things. I was like, yeah. Even though he's already <laughs> Which actually, you know, we should we should. I don't I don't know if Zach is watching right now, but Zach, if you're watching, you better drop in some things that because now it's both of us. So just, <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, just you know, Zach became both of our students. So, yeah, we, oh, we actually took him Mike, to the Philippines. By the way, oh neat. Okay, okay. All right. So okay. All right, I I got a good transitional point for this, for to go into um, part two, okay, and where and where to pick up with part two. And where I'm going to pick up with part two is basically your guys meeting and the interconnection of your guys training and all that with how the benefits from each other, and then with the with your guys demos. So I think that's going to go really well. That flow really well. Okay, so yeah. what I want to finish this first part on is I want people to give some exposure um, to your show. So let's go with how how did the show come about? Like what? Like you know um, when and how did it come about? You know, what, what was the thought? What were the goals? And then folks that are watching, this is the I'm alluding to the uh, Paul and June show. But before you guys answer, before you guys answer, you know, a little oh. special. So well, how we ended up uh, kind of connecting? Oh yeah, well, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna show this oh. first. Time. <laughs> are we talking about are we talking about connecting for the show or are we talking about? Oh, yeah, so there's gonna be a lot of martial arts talk, uh, a lot of FMA talk uh, for all those that don't know that's Filipino martial arts, um, and everything the in first between one. that. I am doing martial arts for a long time from FMA Filipino martial arts. Thai boxing, I, got, I did karate, goju, taekwondo, and so on and so forth. But that's not the issue. There we are. <laughs> Who are those guys? <laughs> yeah, freaking guy didn't have a freaking uh, van in the garage. <laughs> Welcome to Florida. Oh, this is nice and... Mm. Mm. Marco Allen Ati is right there. Mm -hmm. the yeah, that's actually our first show. <laughs> and we have no topic. <laughs> we just got more subscribers now. 
<laughs> but uh, you better not joke. Anything you want us to discuss, feel free to put in the comments and we'll get back to you. Like, share, <laughs> learn. <laughs> like, comment. Yeah, right, comment. <laughs> comments. Yes. What he said. I agree. Like, okay. share. We'll talk to you guys later. Cheers. Have a good one. <laughs> oh, God. Too funny. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, so um, okay. So, folks, that um, if you're watching, um, they run on YouTube, and you can find it, the Julian and Paul show. Uh, I uh, recommend checking it out. Yeah, I uh, some really funny stuff on there. I mean, big shocker there, huh? Uh, <laughs> so yeah. And by the way, on on that channel, look, you know, the more recent one, Paul's doing a fire knife. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that came up too. It was really good. But so. Um, all right. So what? What was the um? You know, what was the inspiration? How did it come about? Why did you guys decide to uh, do a show? So, so you know, uh, uh, I'll, I'll jump in first. Yeah, uh, go ahead, June. Was, okay. So you know, first of all, this was last year, COVID situation and stuff and whatnot. And you know, it's a matter of saying, all right, you know, uh, still being active within the community. It's like, how can we, you know, let's, and between Kui Paul and I, first of all, we kind of hang out and, you know, train together and there's a lot of dialogue that goes on, a lot of breaking down on history, a lot of breaking down on, on techniques and everything. And, and we're like, hey, we should, we should, you know, create videos, you know, and technique videos and break it down. Why that's wrong, why this is right, why, you know, why this could be better or, or whatnot. And uh, we're like, no, but that's not really our thing. You know, we can't be, hey, okay, hey, now on, you know, on this technique, we're going to do this. I was like, no, let's put a little bit of our flair, you know, our, our normal selves just kind of, but uh, it wasn't really kind of jiving, so to speak. Then um, this was dialogue throughout throughout months or, you know, a couple mm -hmm. weeks or whatever. And then one day I'm driving, you know, to Marco Island. It's a two hour, two hour, two and a half hour drive. And I'm like pondering on this thought, not realizing that he had, was pondering on the same thought. And then we get there, it's like, hey, we should do this. And all of a sudden we're like, yeah, we should do a show. Um, uh, we should do a show. Live, and, uh, <laughs> live, live. live. <laughs> no editing. <laughs> well, for, well, first of all, we're like, what should we do about it? And then we started coming up with these grand schemes of like, hey, we should do this and do this and that. And then it just so happens that, you know, we were having discussions with Karate and Garaje, um, one of our kind of like um, partners in the Philippines. And they were like, dude, if you guys try to come up with like a perfect show thing, you guys are never going to start. You guys need to just jump in. And we're like, all right, you think we just jump in? He's like, yeah, let's, let's try it. So we ended up going live and, and it's like, let's test this out. We didn't know what, we didn't even we have the- no, We know equipment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was all by, you know, just a cell phone. We didn't know what direction we were going to go. We didn't know if we were going to teach anything. We're like, let's just see where this goes. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> but 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 sure enough, um, we got viewers. <laughs> <laughs> I was happy with like the fifty. I'm like, no, we got to go five hundred, five thousand or more. But um, but uh, it was a uh, it it actually uh, you know, we just kind of try to figure out all along as we go. Um, mm. eventually, it kind of evolved, and it's still evolving. But uh, but for the most part, um, we wanted to showcase kind of. It's not really kind of our personalities, but it's more about the Philippine Filipino culture and and mm. I don't know. It's like a pizzazz of of just how we communicate. Everything's nice and easy, kind of you know joking around. But no. if you read between underneath Ooh. the surface, there's a lesson to be learned, or there's some valuable nuggets in there. But we're just all happy go kind of you know kind of uh, you know with the deliveries, um, and it's not. You know, I mean, it's, you know, I guess it's a little bit personality, but it's also kind of the, the Filipino culture and humor aspect of it. Yeah. Um, and then so it evolved to that. And then as we kind of went on and on, we're like, at first it was just supposed to be he, him and I. And ideally, you know, the Jun and Paul show at first was about, well, you know what's Jun and Paul hanging out in the garage. No, we can't, you know, because we're not going to be taping always in the garage. No, it's Jun and Paul having a beer. And I'm like, oh, crap. No, nope, we can't do that because... Um, because uh, we're we going to be drunk. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be drinking. And, and what does that say with our audience? I was like, there goes any kids or, or younger folk. Uh, so, and then I said, hey, you know what? We're just going to go with the, uh, the June and Paul show. Um, and yeah. that's, you know, that's uh, kind of where it went. And as we went from wanting to share a little bit of history of different lineages and different things. I mean, mm -hmm. look, between 
Paul and I, Paul and I, people don't realize, I mean, I didn't realize it until I'm speaking to Paul and, and the amount of knowledge that I'm actually sharing with him. And the two o'clock knowledge- in the morning, this guy calls me at two o'clock in the morning, <laughs> wakes morning. me up. <laughs> <laughs> And my my dumb ass answered the phone. <laughs> oh yeah, we've had some, some yeah, different different history lessons and stuff. But you know, I come from a wealth of knowledge and connectivity with different networks of people and and, and information. And Kuya Paul comes in from the same. And together, we're just like exchanging so many different stories and and connectivities and and just you know a wealth of knowledge. And we're like you know what, we should probably put this on a show of just kind of, you know, sharing certain details and things that yeah. some of them, and some of them are behind the scenes information, um, behind the scenes, meaning that, look, it's in any organization or any communities, you're going to have the full on community, but within the community, you're also going to have your little pockets of inner circles. And, no. you know, apparently we just happen to be in a plethora, in those of, pockets. <laughs> in, in, in a plethora of inner circles. And you get a lot of the behind the scenes and understandings and know, you know, a little bit of kind of the histories and, and, and I guess some of the truths and some of the, the stories and heck, you know, even into like unknown systems across the FMA community, or maybe a majority of the people in the community don't even know, but that's, that's the dialogue that's been going on. So we're like, you know what, let's have a platform and let's share, share, share techniques, share ideas and everything. But it now evolved to just, you know what, we're just going to showcase people and share the community and have fun with it. And that's how I, we've had multiple different guests on it and, you know, including yourself yeah. <laughs> that was there. So, um, so now it's, it's, it's evolved a little bit more to, to just uh, yeah. lift up the community, um, you know, showcase the community and have fun doing it. While yeah, learning. I mean, I'm not really people, do you want to add anything to that that I'm, I may have missed? <laughs> audience sake on the on the aspect of the you know filipino culture and all that like that card game that you guys like we did, <laughs> I really never known about that if like if you guys didn't share that with me yeah 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 that's one of the purpose that we do is we, we try to uh especially for the phil ams who, who kind of doesn't know uh, a lot about the philippines we try to share mm-hmm. why yeah. you know why we do things in the philippines I mean, we, 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 Filipinos are very happy people. So mm-hmm. we try not to uh, uh, dwell on negativity. But for some reason, on some uh, platform in the internet, the negatives for some reason keep showing up. So one of the purpose that the Jude That's and Paul show yeah. was formed yeah. is to get rid of that, to show the positive mm-hmm. side. I figure show the positive, we will have a positive outcome. No, you guys do it very well. Like I again, like I would have never known about some of these things that you guys may expose me to. Um, I, you know, <laughs> well, there was an incident, Gene. So I went to June's house on a on a weekend, right? So uh, I have this. I said, I said, June, I have this VHS. Do you have a VG, VHS <laughs> recorder? He goes, Yeah, I do. He goes, Yeah, this is a funny. Yeah, story. go ahead. No, 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 no. You, you, you started off. You started off because, because so, you know, again, here I am. Remember, remember, Paul and I had come from di- with different information of histories and stuff and whatnot. So, yeah, so he he uh, gets all excited coming to me with VHS. Yeah, I got VHS you know. tape. The, the label on it says Old Masters, right? And I told I told June, I never watched this tape because I, I'm practicing Sarada. For me back then, Sarada will is the best. Nobody can defeat us. So I don't need to, to watch the old masters. So but now I want to see what the hell this is, right? So June pops it on the video. <laughs> and it comes out, it's all Balintawak. It's like a gem. It's old a, it's, films of it's, masters. Three it hour is, long. <laughs> it's three. I don't know if people have seen a lot of the videos that are that are on YouTube. Maybe clips and bits and pieces of Anshun Bakon with with the whole, um, you know, with, with the whole background and everything. Yeah. But uh, you know, actually, GM, Grandmaster Bobby was there as well too. You know, the younger years. I mean, we're talking about. And I only see maybe like a couple clips. minute clips or thirty second clips or something or whatever. But this guy has a whole video of it, and I'm like, dude, I don't know if this exists. Anywhere else, and we're watching it. We're like, oh, we like that technique. Ooh, we, should, we should check out that technique. But it was like, but uh, unfortunately, because um, a, you know, my VHS was old. Uh, B, 
his VHS was old. Uh, his VHS tape was old. We're yeah. watching it, and next thing you know, it like starts, you know, cutting in and out. You know um, how you gotta clean no. the head and stuff. So I'm like, what the heck? I, you know, trying to we're trying to find techniques and just to see what you know what looks fun to you know play with and try. Mm. And it was and it was uh yeah. yeah G so and now, Bobby, G and Bobby was there. I mean uh. Yeah, I mean, you you'll see his younger years. Yeah. Well, like the cat is out of the bag because I was looking forward to kind of you know sharing some of those videos. Uh, you know, probably uh, G and Bobby will be the only one that knows those techniques, uh, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> we can still pull it off. <laughs> it's like remember this. It's like show it to us. Yeah. Oh it's like gosh. yeah, but um, but yeah, it was it was a great video. Um. Yeah. And this know. is the the essence of the June and Paul show because we find things and then. We try to show it in a funny way. No, yeah, I mean, it's definitely uh, that element is one hundred percent there. I think, <laughs> yeah. Those again, um, I, I'll put it on here in an interview. That, but I, I think it's no, I think it's a great show. I, I mean, I, uh, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, and, 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 and we're not trying to purposely be funny, just to let everybody know. You know, yeah. it's not, it's not. Well, first of all, hey, you know, I want to let people know we're not trying to. It's just. That's just kind of how we do, and uh, no, if, people, yeah. <laughs> if people know, if people yeah. know, people that know us hanging out with us, we tend to be kind of, hey, there's that loud table. That's tend to be that's where, where yeah, we're yeah. at. <laughs> yeah, but um, that's one. And second thing I want people to know is that uh, Kipal and I do, um, we do kind of have like, well, I, I don't have full time job now, but you know, we do have kind of like our other life and stuff. So this is just kind of. Yeah. Um, uh, kind of part-time, uh, you know, kind of enjoyment. Yeah. Deal. So enjoyment. if you guys are wondering where the heck is the next show, well, you know what, we still got bills to pay, and, things, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and mind you, mind you, we're not, you know, we're we're, we're not, not close. We're two and, we're, and a half no, hours. <laughs> we're two and a half hours apart, so we had to like really time the thing, and you know, we got to squeeze in the videotaping with with our training and everything that we're trying to, you know, hit the yeah. goals that we're trying to accomplish. That's one, and you know, we we miss a we miss a weekend. We're all of a sudden a month apart. Uh, that's one. The second thing is, is that he or I aren't really like good at video editing. I mean, that video editing that you guys saw there, that's just like bits and pieces that we threw, uh, threw in and like, yeah, oh, you know what? That's not me. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So if you guys are wondering about the, where shows that, it's still there. And um, mm. we, we were trying to keep our show to be more live than it is. Um, live with edits. Live with yeah, edits. Yeah, li live with edits than it is. Um, kind of on a on a like a uh, forum like this, like, we, like, we a, like a forum. Yeah. But uh, it might evolve to that point at some, you know at some point. No, 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 right, no. Right, no. right. Wait, if, <laughs> no, I, I think it's gonna have to. We just can't cover that much ground. But um, you know, we'll see where it goes. But for now, that's kind of what our our focus is, and that's why with you know with you know Karate and Garaje, they we, they've been uh, benefiting with uh with some good uh, content because we're like, hey, we're you know kind of yeah going, because going, that's what we did we. Yeah, we attach with Karate and Grahe for the discussions like like uh, <laughs> la, uh, like this. So it's mm -hmm. going to be on their platform. We're riding along. For us, mm -hmm. we we still want the live. We want the, our guests to to yeah. actually experience us. That's that's what the what we what really want. Uh, I I wouldn't go. I think that that's an organic element, you guys. It really came out well. I, I wouldn't change. Yeah, I think that was. Uh, <laughs> but hey. This is, gonna be great. this is gonna be a great stopping point to go into part two, where I'm gonna tie where the part two is gonna focus on your guys' meeting, your exchanges, the benefits between your exchanges, how it's each helps you grow in your own journey and each other, and then the demos. So this is gonna be perfect. The thing is, I just got schedule when a good part two is gonna be to do with you guys. Um, all that. So how do you, how do you guys how does that sound? Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. We just we just uh, don't know what that timing looks like, cause, but we'll mm -hmm. we'll work on it. We'll figure it out. No, no, <laughs> I be, no. I want you guys to definitely finish. It's just that we go. It'll be three hours. I, I just I know. <laughs> yeah. How many hours? I mean, we're at an hour and a half. Is where we an hour yeah, and a half? Uh, and we're yeah. just an introduction still. Yeah, <laughs> I know we're still an introduction. What is the June and Paul show? <laughs> Don't worry, this happens to our in our interviews too. <laughs> it's, it's a good problem, you know. Yeah, then I wanted you guys. I really wanted people to see your guys' demos because it's going to so much back up this dialogue 
of like when you guys met and how you really enhance each other and all that. And I think that should be shown. So, um, these are really more, this is going to be a good part too. I think it's, yeah. it's really good. You know? So, uh, but if you guys are up for it, uh, I'm more yeah, than happy we, to open the day, so. Yeah, no, no, sure. sure. We're, 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 we're open, you know, just, uh, man, now I got to think about, okay, what, 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 what we want to show. <laughs> we got a lot of time for that. Yeah. We got a lot of time for that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I just have been, I, I want to thank you guys for both for uh, coming on. Um, I really truly appreciate it. I'm sorry we couldn't get through all of them one episode, but when the questions are pouring in and all that, I just knew like that's yeah, not going to happen in one episode. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're asking for demos. June, fire dancing, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you guys want to check out some fire dancing, you know, Kuya Paul has is the one that's leading it. Check it out on our channel. <laughs> There's an episode there. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll post the, uh, I'll post the page on FMA discussion. The spe that specific oh, one. No. <laughs> 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 you know, you want to see fear in Kripal's eyes or shock? It's like when he gets handed the the uh, the fire fire knife, and he's like, "What?" Like, I don't know. <laughs> there's a split second of like, "Oh, uh, what what are we doing?" <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, I knew this this is going to be a uh, a, a very very fun episode, and. Uh, yeah, and I knew it was just going to basically carry itself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it feels like we're just uh, talking, <laughs> like when we had a dinner uh, yeah, after the, after dinner. the taping. That was that was very nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Actually, yeah I, I, be... I was I was a little worried what was going to come out because he already had no. some insights. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm coming, <laughs> I'm coming down next year, and guess. Guess where I'm gonna be staying? Not so much in the area. In the uh, your your area. Oh, for, for yes. Mario or Mark Island? No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm getting this confused. I'm sorry, Paul. Where do you live? Uh, Marco Island. So that's kind of by Naples. Yep. yep. Yes. Yep. I think oh. when we go next year, we're going to be just checking out that area. Cool. It's your I'm time to drive, June. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My two and a half yeah. hour drive across Alligator Alley. Yeah, yeah. I think we want to change the pace. You know what I mean? I mean, we love Miami was, was great, but I think yeah. we just want to change the pace. Um, because my yeah. uh, wife actually a couple of years wants to move down there. So, oh, cool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, now, yes, now yes, we can't wait. It's gonna, yeah. it's gonna be the hub of like all FMA discussion shows and stuff. And and June and Bajo was like, "Hey, we're in the house. We got Eric O'Brien wrestling alligators. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh, there it is. Uh, but, yeah, uh, the, Everglades. You'll see them a lot. Uh, Yes. Yeah, we, drove, we did. We we did go to Everglades. Uh, not this past time, but the year before we went, and um, yeah, that was that was interesting. <laughs> so. Yeah. Oh, Dean, that will be good next year if you come because you said you want to be. Uh, you're not. You want to start shooting. Uh, we got a range that we go around here. We'll bring you to. Uh, Actually, yeah. Jeff and Robin. Jeff uh, and Robin at Scoot and Shoot. At Scoot and Shoot. Uh, he. Uh, they are. Uh, we're actually uh, learning from the two. They're like that. Yeah. On the top hundred shooters in the U.S. And they don't mind newbies. No. Nope. Oh no, they they're, they're they, awesome. They're yeah, awesome. They're, they're awesome. Down to it. Yeah. yeah. Will they have coconut water for me? Of course. <laughs> 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 and actually, uh, just you know, before we and that's where uh, the my the, our knife defense happened because yeah. we got a we got a we we got in touch with them. They were looking for a knife guy. Oh. And okay. I was learning to become a good shooter. Mm -hmm. So we developed our knife defense oh, okay. with them because, yeah, because our program here, because our, our population here are mostly retired community. So mm -hmm. the two in one uh, theory doesn't kind of apply to us mm -hmm. because if, once they go down, they probably won't be able to get up. So, yeah, yeah. there'll be uh, another topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez. 
Oh, but, uh, all right, well, we'll be in touch. You guys got to let me know when you get together and we'll make this happen. Uh, but yeah, I want to I thank you. I, I, this has been a ton of fun. What I do is I download this. What I'll do is the YouTube version. I'll tag each of you guys. Although I can't tag you, Paul. Um, oh, so you guys, okay. Yeah. Your wall, I, was, I think it's your, your privacy settings. Um, oh, okay. Uh, okay. Well, you can we'll, we'll see. Off the group. You know, you can share it from there. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I, I actually, I shared away and stuff anyway, so. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I barely share. <laughs> I barely share. Yeah. You know, share, share one sip beer ball, and next thing you know, it's like in like 30 different forums. <laughs> you know, you know there, there's been times I wake up in the morning, and then all of a sudden I, you know, or I wake up and, you know, open when I open up, and it's like, why is my face on this forum? Like, what the heck? What? And all of a sudden it's like videos from our training. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> I shared it. It was on around like 15. I went back, I forget what reason, to the original post, and I saw 56 shares. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's about, that's about right. Yep. You know, no, can't, can't get away. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah. All right, guys. Awesome, Appreciate awesome. We'll okay. All right, well, thank you. Thank you, Everybody. thank you. Everybody have no, a good you, evening. You, you actually, yeah. 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 <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. So we'll be in touch, though. Definitely part two. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Dean. Good night, June. Everybody. Thanks, Dean. Paul, good night. Dean, good, good night, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. All right. <clears throat> All right, uh, entertaining as uh, no shock there on this episode. <laughs> All right, so part two, obviously them coming up uh, will be uh, demos and their car training and all that. So that, that's gonna be fun. So I'm not sure, man, I think they alluded to maybe not this weekend, but the following weekend. So I'll have to see, uh, maybe me or Julius, will, depending on what I got going on. Or, one of us will be doing it. We'll figure it out. But next week, who is coming on next week? Uh, Chris Coven. Um, hope I'm not pronouncing his name correctly. Um, he's a uh, monohog. He makes weapons. All that. Actually, a practitioner. Well, he's going to be on next week, and I just have to figure out well who will be uh, the second person. So that, but that's uh, next week. So if you haven't already, uh, hit subscribe to FMA Discussion on YouTube. You'll see this video. All right, uh, episode and among all, all the great ones, and this will be uh, posted shortly too. So, uh, let me, do I, yeah, sure. You might actually, depending on my um, scheduling, you might actually have to do it depending on what I got going on. But I'm not sure what weekend they alluded to, but we, yeah, we'll definitely we'll figure that out. All right, folks, thank you for tuning in, commenting, those who submitted questions, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>